Ave, for your creator, the original one, has deigned to descend from heaven just to bless you with his presence. Bow before him and he may just spare you. Insignificant though you are, juxtaposed against his almighty presence. We're on a ladder to Arceus, who was discovered by lowly mortals in Generation 4, but he has been around as long as time and space, whose existence he pulled into his creation and continues to allow. For the longest time, Arceus' divinity was merely a rumor whispered among Diamond and Pearl players. Beyond the reach of all but those whose action replays allowed them to scale the ladder suddenly appearing at Spear Pillar and accessing the Hall of Origin. And then, in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, he appeared in the Sinjo Ruins, warping players' minds and destroying the arrogance of all they thought they knew as they struggled and fared to comprehend Arceus's blessed eternity. Additionally, knowing that in the near future we shall be blessed by Legends of Arceus is enough to bring a smile to our faces. Today, we're going higher than we ever have before as we attempt to understand the ineffable Arceus's impact in the competitive scene. We'll be asking and answering two questions. One, could Arceus create a Pokemon that even he could not defeat? And two, as we embark on what may only be called Judgment Day, how good was Arceus actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. Though he knew lowly trainers to be aware of his existence, Arceus did not dare make himself available for their uses in battle throughout much of Generation 4. Though they knew him to technically exist, the illicit methods required to obtain him prescribed them from doing so in serious play. More casual players often broke this holy covenant, but fittingly, they were incapable of wielding Arceus sensibly, let alone effectively, leaving them unable to completely break the game to the fullest of Arceus's nearly limitless potential. That said, these lowliest of heretics were still able to occasionally catch a glimpse of Arceus's divine power. The combination of sword stance and stab extreme speed in conjunction with Arceus's enormous stats across the board was a lethal combination even in inexperienced hands. Still, most of these casual players did not bother with the strategy with the power to destroy all the other ubers Arceus had created. They usually settled for judgments of various types, which were still a mighty weapon but not as cataclysmic as extreme killer, as the normal Arceus sword stance set came to be known. A fittingly lethal name for some with such unmatched brutal efficiency and termination. Though Arceus possessed a universe long array of weapons with which to wreck opponents, it was primarily this set that struck fear in competitive trainers when Arceus allowed itself to be accessed through an event in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. However, it still didn't become part of the metagame for many different reasons. Since it was released at level 100, Arceus could only be EV'd with the vitamin items, meaning that it maxed out at 100 EVs per stat across five of its six stats, so it effectively had base 101 stats across the board instead of 120. The official battle simulator of the time, Shoddy Battle, was unable to implement this restriction. As such, due to this technical limitation, no doubt a result of Arceus's Empyrean power overwhelming the feeble-minded and causing them to become apostates, prevented Arceus from joining and completely dominating the metagame. It wasn't until months later, around the release of Black and White, that a new simulator was made available. It was named Pokelab, and it was able to implement Arceus correctly. However, seeing as the fourth generation was ending, and had one remaining official tournament featuring Ubers, a tournament that was already well underway by the time Pokelab was made available, the decision was made to not allow Arceus so as to not completely upend the metagame on the player base at the very last second and the last opportunity they would have to play in the tier for a trophy. However, outside this tournament, those who loved Gen 4 Ubers and played the tier for its own sake decided to hold their own unofficial tournament with Arceus allowed. Since Arceus had an EV restriction placed upon it, it was referred to as a quote-unquote farce, and the Arceus Uber's metagame became known as Farseus. As for Arceus's effect on the metagame, even in this limited guise, well, it was absolutely dominant. Even with its limited speed, it still had an incredible speed stat for the metagame, outrunning the base 100 speed Palkia that was already considered fast, and by extension, breezing past the base 90s the tier was filled with. Being faster than Arceus didn't necessarily help either, as its bulk was utterly immense and it had reliable healing, not to mention sets with Extreme Killer limited faster Pokemon's ability to answer it even further. Extreme Killer would have been terrifying enough in and of itself. After all, that one set already had near endless permutations between its tertiary and quaternary moveset options in Earthquake, Shadow Claw, Overheat, and Recover, as well as its item choices of Silk Scarf, Life Orb, Lumberry, Leftovers. However, thanks to its famed ability multi-type and Generation Force type plates, Arceus could become any type it desired and would pack a stab plate boosted judgment in conjunction with its Mew-esque move pool. Of course, the idea that Arceus could 
juggle between 17 forms with endless moves that one couldn't possibly predict was hyperbolic. Many forms such as Bug were clearly not very good, and it was usually going to favor a certain set of moves. Judgment, Ice Beam, will o -Wisp, Recover, Combine, and more along those lines, choosing whichever setup, support, or coverage move they liked. It could even set up Stealth Rock. However, even hyperbole often has a basis in truth. Arceus did, in fact, have many, many forms which were not just viable, but dominant to the point of being metagame defining, and those forms often had significant versatility in their movesets. Plus, even those that did it were still excellent by virtue of their utterly massive stats. For example, Arceus Dark never diverted from its Calm mindset and almost always ran Refresh, but that didn't stop it from being nigh peerless in terrorizing stall teams. Many forms of Arceus were, in fact, kept in check by other forms of Arceus. Arceus fighting was particularly excellent because it was one of the best answers to Extreme Killer Arceus, as well as being one of the few Pokemon that could truly scare the astonishing resilient Arceus Steel, and it was near required on stall teams so as to not get destroyed by the aforementioned Arceus Dark. Its access to Parish Song was also immensely helpful for these teams against last Pokemon setup sweepers that could no longer be phased out, such as Calm Mind Kyogre. Arceus fighting wasn't just a destroyer of other Arceus though, it was one of the very best answers to one of the scariest Pokemon in the tier, Darkrai, and having an Arceus form whose judgment hit Dialga super effectively was invaluable as well. Arceus Dragon somewhat subverted the concept of Arceus checking Arceus, as it was an Arceus form whose stab no other Arceus besides Steel could switch into, allowing it to run a terrifying mono-attacking substitute combine recover set. Of course, it also possessed that terrifying versatility. Arceus Steel would get absolutely destroyed if the Arceus Dragon it switched into was Swords Dance instead of the expected combine. In addition to normal and fighting, the most prominent Arceus form was Ghost, which was both a monstrously resilient rapid spin blocker and a terrifying combine sweeper whose stab judgment ripped through the tier's plethora of psychic types. Its immunity to extreme speed and fighting moves alike was also massively helpful in dealing with Extreme Killer, Arceus Fighting, and even Swords Dance Lucario, which had been one of the most terrifying sweepers in the non-Arceus metagame. Arceus Ghost provided an excellent alternative to the tier's previous de facto spin blocker, Giratina Origin, though of course using Giratina O to spin block would allow one to use another Arceus form, whether it was the unmatched Draco Meteor Absorber Arceus Steel, the sturdy and powerful Arceus Ground, or the ludicrously dangerous offensive terror Arceus Electric. Arceus could really do anything it wanted, and the only limit was its user's imagination in terms of typing, set, and how to fit it onto a team. Whether it was the Toxic Spikes Absorbing Support Arceus Poison or the Vicious Stab of Combine Arceus Ice, just about anything was possible. Since the player base now knew what Arceus was capable of, they elected to continue playing DPP Ubers without it allowed. They believed Arceus threw the tier out of balance, and they far preferred the Arceus-less metagame the generation had ended with. An Arceus tournament was held every once in a while, and the same conclusion was drawn repeatedly. Until after several years, with DPP Ubers having continuously increased in popularity, even while being a non-OU tier from a past generation, the player base held a vote, to the chagrin of many old players. It wasn't even Arceus's unpredictability or the fact that it was so good that it was effectively required to use an Arceus form, lest you use an objectively worse team. Those factors certainly didn't help, but the greatest transgression was that it was too good, even for Ubers. It was just too powerful and bulky and fast all at the same time. Extreme Killer was the worst offender by far. Deoxys Speed Hyper Offense teams were scarier than ever with E-Killer waiting in the wings and was almost impossible to handle even when you knew it was coming. The metagame was warped around Arceus's effects and considered by many to be worse than the metagame without Arceus. As such, when the second vote on Arceus was held one year later, it was sent back to anything goes. Such was the power of Arceus. Even with his stats diluted to the point where he was effectively a multi-typed Mew, he still made his debut generation of Ubers his own. When Mega Rayquaza was banned from Ubers in Generation 6, it was following the precedent set by the Old Testament Arceus. Arceus decided to unleash the full extent of his godly capabilities in Generation 5. There would be no more EV restrictions, effectively slashing his base stats down by 19. Zygarde transitioning to Zygarde Complete in Generation 7 was just another case of some so-called dominant uber just copying what Arceus had done two generations prior. Nothing could compare to the terror the uber player base felt when realizing they had to deal with what was basically Arceus Complete. It completely changed the metagame. Now, 
not only was it among the strongest offensive options possible in many different guises, an assaultive nightmare that made Dark Rise Bad Dreams look like peaceful slumber, but his defensive capabilities were simply stunning. In Generation 4, Draco Meteor Spam often equated to an automatic KO. Arceus was so bulky that it could switch into these Dracos, even those boosted by choice specs, and even though it often didn't even resist the move and shrug them off. Since it was faster than every single non-Scarf Draco Meteor user, it would then recover the damage off and then the threat would be neutralized, while Scarf Draco would just bounce right off. Obviously, Arceus couldn't do this infinitely, especially not with multiple hazards down, but to be able to do it at all, to be able to so easily neuter Dialga or Rayquaza once or even twice, was an absolute game changer, helping preserve the health of its bulky teammates like Ferrothorn from being overwhelmed by repeated hits or fire coverage, especially as the dragons it would check and chase out would also be getting worn down by hazards. Arceus so reliably holding teams together against these defensive monsters helped make balanced spike teams among the most reliable team styles in the metagame. Plus, Arceus could make itself even more Draco-proof if it wanted. Arceus Steel was the most obvious candidate, but Arceus Rock and Sand sported a special defense boost and thus was similarly immovable while also not fearing fire coverage at all. For its ability to excel with any set in a variety of forms, some type of Arceus was a mandatory addition to teams once again. So how was it that Arceus Complete, which was so ridiculous that it shrugged off unresisted Draco meters, managed to avoid the anything goes banhammer? Some players complained about its presence right from day one. Surely there could be no form of offensive power creep that could keep it in check. And well, there wasn't. It was the defensive power creep that prevented Arceus from completely shredding everything in sight. If Arceus had one drawback, it was the inability to hold leftovers, which meant passive damage affected it more than many other Pokemon. And passive damage was at an all-time high in Generation 5. Kyogre and Tentacruel spammed Scald, Ferrothorn spammed Leech Seed, Groudon started spamming Lava Plume, and the increased presence of Tyranitar and its permanent sand meant many forms of Arceus often lost health without even being hit by an attack. Many teams limited Arceus by forcing passive damage on it at every corner, because they would also never be able to break through the sheer power. Most notably, Palkia and Giratina Origin ran Dragon Tail, which prevented Calm Mind Arceus from setting up on them and provided critical chip damage in conjunction with the hazards that would leave Arceus forced to recover upon its next entry. While the Lighty Twins and Specially Defensive Kyogre's Roar was similarly irritating, Arceus's lack of leftovers was noticeable when taking offensive attacks too. It would often be forced to recover, giving the opponent a free switch. Finally, the addition of Team Preview helped quite a bit. Though it wasn't an exact science, players were often able to make reasonable estimates of what Arceus form and possibly set they'd be facing before turn 1. Make no mistake though, even though there were ways to keep Arceus in check, there was still nothing more formidable. Its bulk and power and speed meant it matched up so well against so many offensive Pokemon that forcing it to recover wasn't necessarily going to get you too far. Attempts to cripple it with passive damage could be stifled with utility moves like Substitute or a newly buffed Magicode, or the Pokemon attempting to cripple it could simply be destroyed by a surprise coverage move in Arceus's endless move pool. Nothing like Ferrothorn thinking it was free against Grass Arceus only to get Fire Blasted to high heaven. Plus, what was usually one of the main Pokemon keeping Arceus in check? The Arceus on the other team, of course. Once again, Extreme Killer was the tier's most defining sweeper, forever dangerous when you knew what was coming, and made even more terrifying by small moveset, item, and EV adaptation that ruined its few potential checks. However, it was Arceus Ghost that was widely considered the best form and often even the single best Pokemon in the tier for its incredible blend of defensive utility and offensive capability. Its standard calm mindset threatened anything and everything, while its bulky will o -Wisp variant was a pillar of support, but it could even surprise the opponent with a set of Judgment, Stealth Rock, Flamethrower, and Extreme Speed. The surprise E-Speed allowed it to limit Deoxys Speed leads to one layer of hazards, Flamethrower punished Ferrothorn Fortress or Skarmory for trying to get up hazards on it, and it fulfilled the unique quality of being a Stealth Rock setter that blocked Rapid Spin for itself. Once again, Arceus Fighting was outstanding for its ability to deal with E-Killer, Darkrai, and Dialga, while its ability to crush Ferrothorn was always appreciated. It threatened to dismantle many common sand teams as Tyranitar, Escargo, Gliscor, and Ferrothorn were all completely obliterated, as were many common Arceus forms on those teams, usually rock or ground. Even sand teams with Arceus Ghost, Latias, or Ho-Oh weren't necessarily safe, as Arceus Fighting began running an excellent utility set with Toxic and Stone Edge that utterly ruined those. Speaking of Arceus Rock and Ho-Oh, we've already mentioned Arceus Rock's ability to devour Draco Meteors and Sand as one of its best, most unique attributes. It was in fact one of the best Pokemon at standing up to the mighty Kyurem White. However, we also must mention its status as perhaps the purest Ho-Oh counter in the tier, which was similarly valuable. Arceus Rock was one of the main reasons to run Sand. Arceus Ground was also an excellent choice on Sand. Both its Calm Mind and Swords Dance sets were among the most dangerous sweepers in the tier. Earth Plate boosted Ground Stab was powerful enough already and made for an amazing combination with Sand's other Ground-type threat, Exodro. However, in addition to Arceus Ground's power, 
power and bulk. What made its sweeping sets so dangerous was that they had such vastly different checks. Ho-Oh and specially defensive Kyogre were great against the Calm Mind variant, but got absolutely destroyed by the Sword Dancer. Whichever set it used, Arceus Ground was always useful from a defensive standpoint, between its bulk, recover, and the excellent defensive typing that is pure ground. Its ability to completely stuff Scarf Zekrom and its attempts to gain momentum through Volt Switch was particularly valuable, while also making Arceus more resistant to passive damage with a Stealth Rock resistance to go with its Sandstorm immunity. Arceus Steel was the bulkiest specially defensive steel in the tier, the one with the most reliable recovery, and the Arceus form most resistant to passive damage, with a Stealth Rock resistance and immunity to Sand and Toxic. It wasn't nearly as offensively apt as other Arceus forms, given the limited usefulness of Steel Stab, but it was an incredible defensive stopgap against a huge portion of the tier, taking everything from Genesect's Iron Head to Specs boosted Draco Meteors to powerful neutral hits like Zekrom's Bolt Strike, which gave it plenty of opportunity to utilize its incredible support move pool. Arceus Steel was an essential bulwark for bulky teams. Arceus Electric was one of the most brutal sweepers in the tier. It was notable not just for being possibly Arceus's most outright aggressive variant, but also for being a calm minder who stab crushed common special walls Kyogre and Ho-Oh, with Ice Beam and Focus Blast ripping through the tier's resist. It didn't offer nearly as much in the way of defensive utility, but hey, neither did Extreme Killer. And like Extreme Killer, sometimes it was just one turn, one turn that was not difficult to get, that let Arceus Electric zap teams into oblivion. Arceus Dragon was similarly ferocious offensively. It was the fastest dragon type in the tier, letting it get the jump on all the other unboosted dragons, even the speedy Laddie Twins, and tear through teams with its vicious Draco Plate and set up move boosted stab. What made Arceus Dragon stand out was that it was surprisingly defensively potent for such an offensively minded Pokemon. Its resistances to water and fire were quite valuable and let it find many turns with which to terrorize the opponent. Arceus Dark's famed stall breaking combine refresh set still existed, but was far less common, given that stall had become rare by virtue of how difficult it was to pull off. However, an excellent new Arceus Dark set emerged from the tier's tenebrous depths, a set that was actually an excellent addition to stall teams, as it was one of the best Mewtwo counters around. In addition to completely blanking Mewtwo's vicious side strikes, Arceus Dark could tank even boosted Aura Spheres and one-hit KO back with Payback, thus answering one of the most dangerous threats to stall. Arceus Grass was mostly used in support roles, but even when it used Calm Mind, its primary utility was defensive, as it had that all-important water resistance in conjunction with Great Bulk that allowed it to switch into Kyogre and its terrifying water spouts. Kyogre couldn't stay in and try to bombard it with Ice Beams either, as it had to run from Arceus Grass's super effective Stab Judgment or Grass Knot. Arceus Grass also boasted the distinction of being the only Pokemon besides Chansey that could switch into Lustrous or Palkia in Rain, and even Chansey was too hit KO'd by Hydro Pump with Rocks and Spikes. While the same could be said for Arceus Grass and Spatial Ren, Arceus Grass had the benefit of outrunning Palkia, allowing it to recover stall it easily. Arceus Grass was also excellent for its ability to effortlessly stave off Zekrom's Bolt Strikes. Arceus Water was used in a similar vein to Arceus Grass, but with some key differences. Though it feared electric moves from Kyogre, Palkia, and Zekrom, and it didn't have anti-Kyogre stab, it was still effective at warding off choice water spouts, and brought some other major benefits to the table, the biggest of which was its ability to check Ho-Oh. Having a stab boosted by rain was also valuable, both in general use and in giving it more potential to sweep. It could run both Source Dance and Calm Mind effectively, though it was a great utility Pokemon as well, and resisting strong moves like Genesect's Iron Head and Kieran White's Ice Beam was of great general value as well. These were the primary Arceus forms used in the tier, but nearly anything could be made to work effectively. Arceus Ice was arguably even more all-out offensively dangerous than Arceus Electric. In Sun, Arceus Fire was one of the most nuclear Pokemon around and had its power accentuated by all the covers needed to dispatch the tier's fire resist. Arceus Flying ran one of the most threatening mono-attacking combine sets in the tier, as in addition to the great covers of its judgment, it could run Substitute over Refresh since it was unaffected by Toxic Spikes. Even Arceus Poison and Psychic could viably be used in support roles. Sure, the metagame had plenty of other key Pokemon like Kyogre and Genesect and such, but Arceus was itself several of the most important Pokemon around. One of its forms was the best sweeper in the tier, another form was considered by many to be the most important Pokemon around, and so on and so forth. And so Generation 5 Ubers was all about Arceus. Generation 6 brought two new changes for Arceus. One, Pixie Plate brought Arceus Fairy into existence. And two, the buff to Defog completely changed how support Arceus was used. It was now tasked with providing hazard control for its team. This is a crucial piece of utility, and it seemed that there was no better Pokemon to use it than the best Pokemon in the game, especially since Arceus' excellent defensive profile would be valuable in taking on new monsters like Yveltal and various Megas. However, Defog Arceus quickly revealed a glaring weakness, its passivity. 
and thus its proclivity for giving the opponent free turns to be exploited, which was dangerous given the immense threat level of the tier, especially Xerneas. It had already been fairly easy to exploit many forms of support Arceus in Generation 5, but with it losing a crucial move slot, it became downright trivial, especially with how it was often forced into using the fog to get rid of hazards. Support Arceus was so offensively inept that it regularly found itself being trapped by Shadow Taggers. Mega Gengar was one thing, but it also provided a completely free KO for Gothitelle of all things. Many top players thus decided to fog Arceus as a waste of the best Pokemon in the game. It often failed to remove hazards against fast-paced taunt spamming Deoxys Speed or Sticky Web Hyper Offense teams, balanced teams didn't have much trouble trapping it, and it was just generally passive and unable to accomplish anything of note. The resist that forms like Water and Poison brought, in addition to their bulk, often made them unnecessary evil for balanced teams, but they were just dead weight so often. Fortunately, this was easily remedied by simply using offensive Arceus forms instead. Extreme Killer was, once again, one of the most brutal threats in the tier, and provided valuable priority against faster Pokemon like both Mega Mewtwo's and boosted Xerneas. Arceus Ghost became even scarier because its stab was no longer resisted by steals. Arceus Electric ripped everything up once again. Fitting these forms of Arceus on offense was a much more reliable recipe for success in XY Ubers than trying to get anything out of the passive defense the other forms would attempt on balance. Then Oraz came around, and Arceus bequeathed Primal Groudon and Mega Salamence onto the metagame. This was a ploy by Extreme Killer to make Hyper Offense even more stupefyingly overwhelming, and these two were the best partners it could have asked for. It was the best cleanup artist in the game, alongside another Hyper Offense teammate, Xerneas, and they were now paired with two of the most unstoppable wall breakers in existence. Arceus Ground also rose to become the clear second best form in the tier. No matter what set it ran, it was the best answer to Primal Groudon. It could run an excellent support set whose combination of typing, bulk, stealth rock resistance, and ice beam allowed it to counter Mega Salamence as well. Support Arceus Ground also had the important distinction of packing a stab judgment that would absolutely destroy Mega Gengar. However, what really made Arceus Ground stand out was that it could not only answer Primal Groudon, but it could do it while running a monstrously dangerous Swords Dance set. Its speed, bulk, recovery, power, and coverage coalescing to create one of the scariest sweepers in the tier in its own right, effortlessly ripping through many a standard team. There was a significant difference in overall viability between Arceus Normal and Ground and the rest. No other form packed the sheer menace of those two. However, this was more a testament to the utterly incredible power of those two, which was largely a product of their effectiveness against the other top Pokemon in the metagame. The other Arceus forms were still quite valuable. Support Arceus Water was quite good once it stopped wasting a move slot on Defog. With Toxic, it was a good answer to most Primal Groudon, while Ice Beam dispatched Mega Salamence. Why not just use Arceus Ground, you ask? Well, a few reasons. One, some Primal Groudon ran Overheat or even Eruption, which Arceus Ground struggled to handle. Arceus Water didn't fear those at all. Two, Arceus Water was an excellent answer to Ho-Oh. Three, Arceus helped stave off Primal Kyogre. And four, Arceus Water checked yet another one of the tier's most powerful Pokemon, Arceus Ground. The prominence of both Yveltal and Darkrai held Arceus Ghost back further than in previous generations, especially as Yveltal could actually switch into Arceus. Plus, with the prominence of Defog, Arceus Ghost's ability to block Rapid Spin was almost infinitely less useful now. However, the tremendous neutral coverage Ghost stat provided ensured Arceus Ghost was always a threat, as did its ability to threaten Giratina Origin and the Laddie Twins super effectively. Arceus Ghost now preferred to boost with Swords Dance rather than Calm Mind, as this let it fire off of surly powerful Shadow Forces, notably crushing the Ho-Oh that would check the Calm Mind set. The two-turn effect was difficult to exploit when there were so few Pokemon that wanted to take it in the first place, and it even broke through Protect to boot. Plus, using Swords Dance allowed Arceus Ghost to make use of Extreme Speed, limiting the window in which Yveltal and Darkrai could check it. Indeed, Yveltal was often just a double switch with Stealth Rock up away from being able to switch into Arceus Ghost safely. E-Speed was even useful for ensuring Deoxys Attack couldn't finish Arceus Ghost off from low health. Arceus Ghost also had the highly coveted trait of being an Arceus form able to switch out against Mega Gengar, despite Shadow Tag, thanks to Generation 6 making Ghost types immune to ability trapping. Arceus Fairy was a unique support Pokemon. It was unique in that it checked several high-level threats, including but not limited to Mega Salamence, Yveltal, Darkrai, and Rayquaza. In addition, it was a highly adept stealth rocker as a result of its excellent matchups against the tier's hazard control options. It switched into and threatened out popular defoggers such as Giratina Origin and the Laddie Twins, allowing it to consistently maintain the hazard throughout the course of a game and absolutely destroyed Mega Sableye, ensuring that it wasn't going to get blocked by Magic Bounce. Of course, Arceus Fairy was massively vulnerable to Mega Gengar's super effective Stab Sludge Wave, but it was not an insurmountable weakness. It could enlist the help of a pursuit trapping teammate, since Mega Gengar would have had to spend a turn Mega Evolving before it had Shadow Tag, or it could slot Earth Power into its moveset, which would also hit Primal Groudon super effectively. It was well worth the effort to bypass 
last Mega Gengar, as the various utility Arceus Fairy offered was as excellent as it was hard to come by. Arceus Dragon provided another such unique, valuable support role. It was the Arceus Water in that it both resisted fire and checked Mega Salamence, making it a sturdy answer to even overheat variants of Primal Groudon. Arceus Dragon's primary advantage lie in its judgment, which was the move it used to KO Mints, meaning it didn't need to waste another move slot on Ice Beam, and could thus fit the fog instead. As a bonus, its judgment also threatened the Laddie Twins and hit both primals for solid damage. Continuing in the vein of support Arceus forms was Arceus Rock. Now, it didn't love being an Arceus form that had to run in fear of Primal Groudon's Precipice Blades, but it did love being the single sturdiest Arceus form against Ho-Oh, Rayquaza, and Mega Salamence, because it actually resisted their flying stabs and threatened to KO them in return with Judgment. It was also excellent against Yveltal and Rayquaza, and though it had to run from both primals, it could also chunk them for respectable, irrecoverable damage on the switch with Judgment, especially with Stealth Rock up. Generation 6 really shook things up for the Arceus form, rendering previously excellent types downright unusable. Xerneas completely knocked Arceus fighting out of the metagame, while Primal Groudon's arrival signaled the end of Arceus Electric's time in the limelight. However, Gen 6 also provided a great new Arceus form in Fairy, and several of its other forms continued to excel, including the better than ever Extreme Killer. Now, Xerneas, Primal Groudon, and Mega Salamence did become the new faces of Ubers, with Primal Groudon occupying a mandatory slot on every serious team. But you know what else occupied a mandatory slot on every serious team? That's right, some form of Arceus. It did it all. There was still nothing like it. Arceus still commanded a mandatory space on all competitive teams in Generation 7. It was even more monstrous now, because it no longer needed to hold a plate. Multi-type was also activated by the newly added Z-Crystals. Sure, Arceus wouldn't have its stab boosted every time it was used throughout a game anymore, but there was nothing more game-breaking than Arceus using a Z-Move. Arceus was also better than ever defensively, as it now had an easier time tanking Mega Salamence's flying stab, thanks to Gen 7's aerial late nerf. That said, the nerf to burn damage made the the will o -Wisp chip of support Arceus forms less effective, though this was also helpful for making special Arceus forms much better at eating burns. The premier form was now ground. Not only was handling Primal Groudon as important as ever, it was also key for dealing with Necrozma Dustming upon Ultra Sun and Moon's release. Combine was its primary set, as it was a brutal special sweeper that didn't care for special walls like Magirna and Dustmane, while Ice Beam allowed it to handle Zygarde Complete, Rayquaza, and Mega Salamence effectively. However, that was far from all it could do. Support Arceus Ground was an excellent defense a pillar on many teams, checking a variety of threats and either defogging South Rock away or setting rocks up itself, and of course, the Source Dance set was always a massive threat, turning the tables on the Ho-Oh and Primal Kyogre that would check the Calm Minder. It often didn't even need a boost to be threatening. Tectonic Rage ripped the likes of Xerneas, Ferrothorn, and Primal Kyogre apart. What about Arceus Normal, you ask? Well, speaking of Ultra Sun and Moon, the addition of Mars Shadow finally provided the world's best extreme killer check. It was faster, immune to extreme speed, and destroyed Arceus with a vicious close combat. It was also more difficult for Extreme Killer to pack all the moves it wanted to get past all its checks, many of them new additions, including but not limited to Zygarde Complete, Celesteela, Necrozma Dustmane, and Haze Toxapex. The increased popularity of Ferrothorn and physically defensive foul play of Eltal was severely detrimental as well. However, never count E-Killer out. Not only was its immunity to Moongeist being crucial for its team's capacity to handle Scarf Lunala, it was still one of the most dangerous Pokemon around, in spite of the new thorns in its side. Mars Shadow was its biggest option obstacle. So what did Arceus do? It slapped on Chapelberry and completely turned the tables on Marsh Shadow, destroying it with Shadow Claw. It could similarly wreck its other checks, depending on what its team needed it to do. Despite all of these new answers and the weakening of its partner Mega Salamence Aerolite, E-Killer was still a staple on Hyper Offense teams, and was a major reason why the style continued to be one of the most dangerous in the tier. Arceus Fairy became even more prominent and valuable in Generation 7. Its role from Oraz was even more valuable now, as in addition to so reliably getting up Stealth and countering its previous targets of Yveltal, Rayquaza, and Mega Salamence, it was also an excellent answer to the new additions of Zygarde Complete and Mars Shadow. Even the ubiquity of Necrozma Dustmane could be spun in Arceus Fairy's favor. Dustmane didn't exactly want to switch into it if it was carrying Will-O-Wisp. Arceus Water also reprised its role from Oras. Answering Arceus Ground was even more important now. Handling Eruption Primal Ground and remained imperative, and just like Arceus Fairy, it handled Mega Salamence, Rayquaza, and Zygarde Complete, while also crucially countering Ho-Oh and Dustmane. 
It even acted as a solid check to Mega Lucario, pivoting into its Iron Tails and resisting potentially boosted bullet punches. Arceus Dark stepped into a defining role. Its defensive utility was invaluable in saving off both Necrozma Dustwing and Ultra Necrozma, as well as completely devouring Lunala, stifling Zavelta, and effectively checking Mega Mewtwo Y. While its bulk let it retain the standard support Arceus capability of checking Mega Salamence, Zyger Complete, and Rayquaza, it was also distinct as a support Arceus form, unafraid of Shadow Tech trapping from both Gothitelle and Mega. Mega Gengar. Like in the previous generation, the highly centralized nature of the immensely power creep metagame meant that while some variants of Arceus remained among the best Pokemon in the world, its remaining forms struggled to make an impact, with the surprising exception of Arceus flying. The great neutral coverage of his judgment allowed it to effectively run a refreshed Calm Mind set that easily bypassed the tier's toxic span. However, though its niece was legitimate, it struggled to find usage as regular as that of the more prominent forms, and no other forms managed to establish themselves as anything more than a gimmick. Again, overall, Arceus was still one of the best, most important Pokemon around, and was used in some form on every serious competitive team. It was just that it was more limited in terms of which forms were viable than ever before. Though that is just one way of looking at it. Another way, which would be similarly accurate, would be that the traits from a select few Arceus forms, especially Ground, were too valuable to pass up in the context of the strongest Ubers metagame ever. Perspective is everything. Yes, Arceus is the creator of all, but that also means he continues to create stronger and stronger Pokemon, and he is still one of the best of the best. And that's it. So how good was Arceus actually? Well, if you're familiar with competitive Pokemon, you know that just because a Pokemon is legendary doesn't make it good. The sordid histories of Articuno and Entei are testament enough to that. Arceus is basically the complete opposite of that. Its in-game status as the creator of all would lead one to expect the world from it. And it somehow managed to provide even more. In its debut generation, it was agreed to be too much for Ubers, years before it even brought Mega Rayquaza into existence. And that was when it had an EV cap limit that effectively brought its stats to barely above those of Mew. Then the player base arrogantly believed they would be able to contain its power and chose to retroactively undo the Arceus ban. The resulting metagame proved to be a farce and Arceus returned to its status as the original Uber that was too good for Ubers. Thanks to its chameleonic multi-type, Arceus was simultaneously several of the best Pokemon in the four generations of Ubers it has existed in thus far, persevering through power creep of its own creation. It's likely looking that Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl will be a Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee type spinoff. And I mean that in the sense that it's a side game and not like that it literally has Pokemon Go mechanics. But anyways, so it doesn't look like Arceus will make an appearance in Generation 8 Ubers proper. But if it did, it would once again rank amongst the best of the best. Instead, it will settle for dominating BDSP Ubers the only way it can. Ave Arceus. Though I guess Arceus can't really complain because it's finally a box art legendary because it has its own game now. Thanks for watching everyone. And as always, if you like the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to false white gaming for more weekly pokemon content and in the comments i want to know what do you think about competitive arceus which of its forms is your favorite whatever it is let me know in the comments also thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos and thank you to everyone else watching as well And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.